All right, another morning after another wonderful warm showers experience. If you're coming through this way, check out the warm showers in Proserpine. They live out Strathdickie Way and they are great. Great family, great dogs. Very cute. Once again, it's extremely windy today. Um, and the weather, the sky is a bit grey, it doesn't look so great. Not exactly what we'd uh, hoped for for our time in Airlie Beach. There's a lot of tours and stuff in Airlie, a lot of boat trips and stuff. Um, but none of it really appeals to us. It's all like snorkeling trips and stuff, that's not really for us. So um, I don't know what we're going to do. Um, people say it's an amazing place, I wonder if they like it because of all these tours and stuff. Which we don't know if we're going to do, so... Anyway, it's only like another 15k, so um, yeah, let's go and check it out and see what's going on. Alright, we are in Airly Beach. It's very windy. Very windy. Uh, but very beautiful. Um, we went. Uh, we went to the place. Um, we dropped our dropped our uh, luggage in, left our bikes there, and now we're just going to wander into town and have a look about. They're going to call us up when the room's ready, so we can go back and uh, get all sorted out. But for now, we're just going to have a, a very windy walk. Yeah. <laughs> we hadn't originally given much thought to whether or not we'd go to Ely Beach on our way north. But as we were leaving Maryborough, our wonderful friends Anita and Kepa made an announcement. They had booked us a room at a resort so that we could have a rest after getting back on the road. That incredible act of kindness decided our path. We would take a day off in early and see what the small beach town had to offer. Ellie Beach would be our first taste of Queensland coastal tourism. Helicopter rides, snorkeling and boat tours, with a heavy emphasis on the Great Barrier Reef, were right at the forefront, with tour operators on every street corner. We spent the morning getting the lay of the land while wandering through shops selling sunglasses, hats and souvenirs. That's classy. Uh -huh. Don't, I'll get a copyright strike. <laughs> Let's go. I don't actually like my products, by the way. Booties. So, we've had our little wander around. We got some sushi, we got some ice cream, and it wasn't too long before. Hey, we're in a beach community. You have to have a margarita in a beach community. Uh, next one I'm getting, though, is going to be frozen. Mm, that's really good. And with that, it was time to cut a little loose. The hotel had called to tell us our room was ready, but it was a bit out of town, so we decided to check out the bar scene first and head back later in the afternoon. That is art. All right, after our day wandering around, we are finally here and uh, it's, it's probably the nicest room we've uh, ever had in Australia. So let's go take a look. Oh, hey. Welcome. Oh, we got some kitchen. Check it out. Check out the bedroom inside. Got the Massive bed. And out here. How's that? We are pretty stoked. <laughs> 
so once again thank you Anita thank you Kepa this is just this is so good like we needed this big time and it's um, yeah it's awesome couldn't have uh, couldn't have wished for more yeah that's been our day off in early beach gonna chill now gonna have some beers and um, yeah that'll be it um, I think tomorrow we're gonna ride out to Bowen which um, that will be about 70k, 75 I guess, to the caravan park, so um, we'll see how we go, like that's easily achievable, but depends on what we fancy doing on the way out of town, we might like stay in town for breakfast or we might go and um, see more sights on the way out. Yeah, I guess this is it. Oh, hell yeah. All right, good morning from our lovely little apartment we've got here in Airlie Beach. Yeah, great night, super comfy bed, super chill place, great view, um, and it's time to go. We totally could have stayed here another night. This was great. Thank you so much, Kepa. Thank you so much, Anita. This was amazing. This was like so kind of you. Like seriously, thank you. Yeah, so um, I've been catching up on some admin stuff with the laptop. Um, I've got a video up uploading right now. It's going quite slowly because the free internet isn't very isn't very quick. Um, they do have like a business internet that's like super high speed if you're working here, but obviously you need to pay for that, which I guess is understandable. So um, yeah, it's still working though, so um, we're getting there. So plan today, cycle back through Airlie Beach um, and we're actually gonna head out to this um, crocodile lookout. It's just along the road from where they actually do the crocodile safari, which is um, like a croc tour where they put you on this boat and um, take you up and down the river and you can go crocodile spotting. So yeah, we might not see any crocs, but we figure, hey, it's, we're in the area, it's worth stopping by there. After that, we'll be heading to Bowen, which is the home of the big mango. All right, so let's get packed up and uh, hit the road. Take your time. Right hand side is less steep. So there's a taxi, okay, it's alright. Time to ride down this crazy hill that we pushed up. Oh, it probably doesn't come across how steep this actually is. No? No bueno? <laughs> no bueno. <laughs> Just about out of the early beach area and all the horrible traffic. Oh, man, getting in and out of that place is rough on a bicycle. Real rough. Anyway, awful traffic aside and a wee spattering of rain, we're probably about halfway there already. And um, with it being a bit cold and drizzly, I'm not sure we're gonna see any crocs, but yeah, we'll give it a go anyway. Picnic benches and stuff. Sweet. Should we rock up at this picnic bench in the shade? Oh, that tide's pretty high. I don't like that. <laughs> All right, this is it. We just pulled up on the croc spot. Um, there's some danger signs here, so. Uh, and uh, yeah, the water um, looks very high, which uh, I'm not a fan of. That's, that's quite scary. Um, they're quite close if they're in there. Uh, yeah, let's, let's take a peek. Well, no sighting of any crocs thus far. Yeah, uh, I don't know if it's a time of year thing. Uh, the water's quite high, it's quite murky. 
Um, we're in the middle of the day. Supposedly the best time to see them is at dawn or dusk because it gets too hot in the middle of the day. But at the same time we're in winter, so maybe this is fine. Maybe it's just, I feel like it's just the summer where it gets too hot for them. Because I mean, if it wasn't hot here, they, there wouldn't be crocodiles, you know? It's not like they're roaming around like up in, in, in Scandinavia or even down in Tasmania. You know, Tasmania is super close, but it's too cold for them. So yeah, I don't know. We've been like looking across the opposite bank where like a lot of the reviews say they've spotted them. Um, can't see anything, you know, looking under all the little trees and all the little hidey holes where they might be and yeah, nothing. All right, we are back on the Bruce <laughs> yet again, <laughs> our favorite place. I just explained to Bonnie that we were probably going to be on the Bruce for like the next five days. The look of disgust was uh, something to behold. Uh, <laughs> so next up, Bowen. Um, it's about 60k. I reckon we'll probably be there for lunchtime. And once we get there, we can think of our next move. So 60k is not really enough for a day on the Bruce. If we're on the Bruce, we need to be doing big miles and taking advantage of it. If we stop at Bowen, there's going to be places to camp. And it might even like line us up well for like future camps. So maybe we will stop there. We're going to stop at a particular landmark that some people may have heard of. And um, at that point, that's I guess that's when we'll assess our plan and figure out what we're going to do next. All right, so as usual, we've uh, got our puncture of the day in the worst spot imaginable. Why is it always me? Like literally, it's always this back tire. It's always like when we're really close to town on the side of a busy yeah, thankfully it's not too busy now. I think everyone's stopped for lunch. But yeah, oh well, let's let's get it done. Alright, so we finally made it to the Big Mango. Big Mango. We were told about this two years ago in Perth. We met a couple of backpackers <laughs> who've been over this way and they mentioned the Big Mango. Yeah. And we never thought we'd get here. And there it is. So the Big Mango has been a pilgrimage for us. Um, not just because it's another big thing here in Australia, but because back when we landed in Perth, um, and we were staying at a Helpex, these German backpackers showed up there and they, they'd been in Australia for a year already. They'd just gotten their second year visa and they had lived in Bowen for a time. I think maybe picking mangoes. There were some Helpex hosts up here and they told us all about the big mango. So I was adamant that we had to see it. And at the time, um, I remember David was just like, no, we're, we're probably not gonna make it up there. And we really did think, okay, we're gonna get from Perth to Sydney, and then we're gonna fly out to New Zealand, and, to New Zealand and cycle New Zealand, and then just continue across the, the world, you know? Well, I remember the German uh, the backpackers, they were just like, don't plan too much. Seriously, like your plans will change in this country. How right were they? I mean, I don't think this is what they had in mind. This is not what they had in mind. This, this isn't what anyone had in mind. They weren't quite that profound, yeah. but yeah, yeah, it's, but, it's, it's ringing true. It's ringing true, and it's hilarious because we never did make it to Sydney. They, they shut the whole city down right, like, as we were about to go, like, into the suburbs of it. Or Brisbane. Or Brisbane. We never yeah. made it to either of those major cities. However, we have made it to the Big Mango. <laughs> so, I'm, I don't There's know. There's some it's weird a... sort of serendipitous yeah. kind of <laughs> full, self-fulfilling prophecy yeah. thing happening there, isn't there? I, I, you know what? I'm not going to lie. I was 
really hoping we'd get to Queensland. Like, I didn't want to make too big of an issue of it, but this, of all the states, this is the one I really wanted to go to um, because it reminds me of Florida. And I miss the Florida weather, you know. <laughs> I don't like uh, wearing winter coats. Well, we got a lot more of it to go. Yes, we do. All right. So we are back on the road heading for air on our old friend, the Bruce Highway. So we've had the usual start to the day with uh, the insane stretch of roadworks leading out of town. That just went on ages and ages and ages. It's narrow, there's people overtaking you close. And it wasn't too bad this morning actually. Most people were quite patient and waited till it was safe, which is unusual. It seems that Queensland's actually not been too bad for traffic. Again, much better than New South Wales. Just the roads have been way better in general. Well, other than the Bruce, but you know. Checking out the free camp, which was sketchy as hell, we managed to find a caravan park, so that's all good. Um, unfortunately, I've made a discovery. Uh, where is it? That spoke is no longer attached. And judging by the nipple on it, it's the same one that I had replaced in Gladstone. So, it looks like I'm gonna be replacing a spoke tonight. It ain't perfect, but I think it's gonna have to do. At least until we get to Townsville and um, can get it lifted properly. So after my little broken spoke fiasco, we've uh, managed to get the tent set up. You can probably hear them, but there's bats here. Like it's the flying foxes again that we love. Yeah, this looks like there's a small colony of them here. But for now, uh, I think this is it. Good night.